Hi, and welcome to another edition of Chinivision. This time, it's an Atari arcade classic, Paperboy. Paperboy was released in 1985 by Atari, and I first saw it in the arcade at Clarence Pier in Southsea. It used to be right down the left-hand side there, complete with the handlebar controls. Paperboy was a game ported to every single system under the sun that you can think of. And in the UK, the company handling the home computer versions was Elite. Starting on the Sinclair Spectrum, got the daily sunscreen that you see on most versions saying Amazing Paperboy delivers. You can select your keyboard controls or joystick and press zero to start the game. Very basic tune here on the 48k Spectrum. There is no 128k version of this game. On the arcade version, there's three levels you can start off on, starting with Easy Street. On the Spectrum, you have to start off on Easy Street. So we've got to go along here and deliver the papers. I'm sure you're all familiar with the format of the game. The idea of the game is you deliver the papers into the boxes marked Sun um, at the side of the road. It's an American Star Street. Or you can put it onto their doorsteps. Doesn't matter which. You get more points for it being in the box. If the house is a non-customer, then you've got to smash their windows. And at the end of the level, being the 1980s, there's a BMX course that you can go along and get bonus points on. Graphics on the Spectrum, monochrome as you'd expect. Fairly speedy as you move along. It's recognisably Paperboy. Really, it's pretty much what you'd expect from the Spectrum. It's a fairly reasonable attempt at recreating the arcade experience on your home computer. So on the Commodore 64, and we've got some music as you expect and far more colourful graphics, and looks much more like the arcade version. I have to say here on the Commodore 64, it's a little bit more difficult than some of the other versions. Even on Easy Street here, there's a lot of obstacles to overcome and it can be difficult to avoid some of the obstacles. Some of the faults with the game are inherent with Paperboy anyway. For example, if you're on the right-hand side of the screen, you get very little visibility of what's coming towards you because of this pseudo 3D view that you get. Presented fairly nice. He scrolls along very smoothly here on the Commodore 64. As I say, there seems to be a slight difficulty thing here, but overall it looks, feels and plays like Paperboy. You do get some of this stuff where the sprites appear to wait for you, stand there, and then suddenly start moving when you hit a predetermined point on the map. Unfortunately, that seems to be something that is common in a lot of the versions, not just the Commodore 64. Onto the BMX course here. Oh, no, I've, that's gone horribly wrong. Yeah, on the Commodore 64, it's a fairly competent port, really. Can't complain. Very colourful menu screen here on the Amstrad CPC. A Mode Nought Paperboy logo at the top. And uh, medium resolution text below it. It's a nice split screen technique there. Wonderfully colourful graphics here on the Amstrad, slightly jerky scrolling in a small window, but there's no sound. Apparently on the Amstrad, when they were programming the game, they ran out of memory, and Elite basically said, we've got to get this game out and we're just going to release it without any music. Oddly enough, around the same time, the Amstrad version of Outrun came out, which also had no music and very, very spartan sound effects in that case, but Paperboy has got nothing at all. It is rumoured that apparently the graphics from this version were ported to the Sega Master System version. It's a rumour I've heard over the years, and I'm going to be interested to see if that's actually the case when we come to compare them a little bit later on. The small window aside, and the com complete lack of sound, it plays really, really well. This is equally well as the other two 8-bit versions. The differences between the three versions are, are purely graphical, with perhaps the Amstrad version looking the best, even though it doesn't have the best scrolling in this tiny window. And the other two versions following up, but playability-wise, yeah, they're all pretty much in the same ballpark. It 
Now, there's something interesting about the Amstrad version of Paperboy. Somebody noticed that on a compilation in Spain, Paperboy had been included, but it wasn't the version that we played in the UK. So we're going to have a look at this. So I just fired it up here, and it's basically, I think what we've got here is the Spectrum version ported across to the Amstrad with quite garish graphics. Very detailed, but it's, it's horribly, horribly garish. And what appears to have happened is that this was probably the original Amstrad CPC version programmed by Elite, and that somebody decided that it simply wasn't good enough. So they programmed the second version of Paperboy that is the one we just saw earlier on with the more colourful graphics, and that somehow this original version of Paperboy got released accidentally on the Spanish compilation. And I've, to be honest, I think Elite probably took the right decision because this second version of Paperboy, the original version, isn't really much cop. As I say, it's pretty garish. I mean, they might, for all we know, this could be unfinished and they could have tweaked the colours and improved it. And it does at least have music on the menu screen. But overall, it's not terribly good. Apparently, somebody actually has hacked the menu music from this second version onto the the more colourful proper elite version of the game so it does have music but i'm not going to look at that because it's as i say a hack and wasn't what was originally released moving over to the bbc micro now i don't know why bbc owners always have to have the instructions included for them before they load up a game which seems a bit that seemingly not capable of reading the instructions that are included on the inlay usually slightly annoying bbc style controls here joystick doesn't work and if you notice, we've got the accelerate key on the star. We've also got a turbo speed. So you've got to hold down shift and the star key to go at turbo speed. To be honest, I think it's not going to work out very well. A little bit of music here on the Daily Sun screen. No picture on that screen, actually. I wonder what the game's going to actually be in mode 7 or high res screen. Oh, it's high res. And oh, yeah, this is, um, this is ugly. Oh, and not very nice to control either. This is oh dear turbo. Now I've just gone into turbo speed by mistake. Then you go, you go from this being the maximum speed to going really fast with nothing in between. Oh, this is no, no, no. Granted, the two color mode gives you very detailed graphics, but they're pretty ugly. And the movement is just so jerky. There's no fluidity at all. And this turbo speed, there seems to be a great big gap between going maximum speed on the star key and then going turbo speed, which is basically uncontrollable. And this wasn't something I think was a part of the arcade game, certainly not on none of the other home versions. This is, this is something the programmer has decided to add by himself. Yeah. It's not very good. Going over to what was the first Sega Master System game programmed in the UK. And it was produced by, not Elite, but US Gold. Familiar Paperboy music and some really nice graphics here, actually, on the title screen. Apparently, the programmer of the Amstrad CPC version had something to do with this Master System version, it's an, and it's actually alleged that some of the CPC sprites were reused in this version, but we'll, we'll see that in a minute. This is looking much more close to the arcade. And all the curbs are in the right place, not accidentally hitting the curb there, as I did in the BBC version. Graphics are really nice, and this scrolls so well. It actually feels really like Paperboy, a really authentic experience. Everything you'd expect, even this fading in and fading out of the screen there, is exactly as you saw it on the arcade machine. This is a really solid conversion. Plays so well. It's 
So let's compare it to the CPC version and see if those sprites were reused. Yeah, I can't see the Amstrad version has been reused on the Sega Master System. I don't know where this has come from, but there's no similarity. Those sprites don't look the same at all. It could be the same people worked on the conversion. That's perfectly possible. Both Z80 based machines. No, I think we can safely say there's no Amstrad sprites used in the Master System version here. So on the Master System, it's difficult to know what to say really because it's just a really solid conversion of the arcade game. If you like Paperboy, then perhaps aside from a few of the cars that aren't appearing there that I've just noticed, everything else is pretty much here. The music's as good as you can expect on the Master System, very authentic to the arcade. The graphics look really good. The main player sprite handles really well, which is a little bit more of a problem than some of the other systems. And the difficulty curve is just right. Overall, this is a really, really solid conversion of Paperboy to the Master System. So overall, which versions to check out? Well, as I say, the Master System is the one to play if you can. First Master System game programmed in the UK and probably one of the better ones, actually. BBC version, sorry, it's pretty naff. Looks ugly, plays ugly. On the main three 8-bits, Commodore 64, Spectrum and Amstrad, the Amstrad's probably the best looking and plays pretty well. The Commodore 64 version's just got a slight difficulty thing there that it just seems to be not very well balanced in terms of the difficulty. On the Spectrum, it's exactly as you expect on the Spectrum, really. It's a, as decent as a conversion as they probably could have done at the time. So in terms of the CPC Spectrum and Commodore 64, well, whichever one of those systems you've got, Paperboy is definitely worth a play.